I've been for a little while trying to generate some interesting words and I got one that's particularly interesting. I've got this little handy script that lets me check the number of actual living people that belong to a particular civilization and I managed to get a word that has uh, basically the only living people you know that belong to big civilizations are goblins. All the other civilizations died out. Elves, humans and our poor dwarves all dead. And in this particular world there's also a specific embark that I had my eye on. A volcano on a glacier in a distant north on this little island-like area. Basically on the pole, I suppose. And I went like, well, this is quite perfect, isn't it? What if the last surviving people of the civilizations gather under the banner of one of the dwarven civilizations and fled to the north, where the legends spoke about this fiery mountain that once broke through the ice? Perhaps all of the gods were born there, perhaps all of the monsters, the dragons. Who knows? But the dwarves knew one thing. The goblins would not follow them there. And so they let their own and the other civilized people, what's left of them, to this mountain in hopes that they can establish a new hold for a civilization in this outwardly unfriendly area. And that's what we are going to be doing today. Now, I had to actually use the hack in order to actually get people from other races into my sieve. So here we have our brave seven dwarves. Uh, all of them already have nicknames and I'm going to introduce them in a little while. And I also spawn in three couples of each race. So we've got some elves, we've got some humans, and maybe I just start with introducing the dwarves first. So if you go into our lovely, lovely dwarves, we've got Rocky, who is our miner. We've got Plank, uh, who is a woodworker. I do realize that there are no trees on the glacier. However, we will be going down and down and down into some caverns. And I thought, well, it would be probably good if I had at least one dwarf that is decent at cutting things quickly <laughs> in case he has to flee. So uh, I have got a little woodcutter and he's also decent at carpentry because why not? Although perhaps I should have invested in something like dodging instead. So we'll find out how my decision affects things. We've got a smith because I, I have a feeling I'm going to need some armor decently fast. We've got a cloth here because, well, as you can see, We've got 12 people with not, not much on their backs uh, because that's how the GUI slash sandbox works. <laughs> so I have to make them so close, I'm afraid. And you know, actually decent pieces of clothing gives, give good thoughts. They improve moods and that is going to be very important in this horrible, horrible place. Yeah, we've got Puffball who is... Um, well, her title is Expedition Leader because apparently the dwarves thought that she was the best fitting person for the job, but she's actually a farmer. So she's going to be very important for feeding everybody. We'll see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> well, we might still yet get some more stuff from caverns. Maybe I'll actually get like one of the humans to hunt things. If I can get my hands on some arrows slash bolts, we'll see. We've got a cook who is very important. He cooks and brews. And we've got the manager. All of them got some nicknames because I cannot for the life of me actually remember the <laughs> generated names usually. I like to just name them something simple that I can actually remember. Like, of course I remember who Rocky is, right? Like he's a miner, of course. And, um, you know, generally everybody here got something related to their profession. Puffball is called Puffball because, you know, dwarves grow mushrooms. Graham for like the, the Graham kind of bread sort of thing. And the other ones are like self-explanatory. Yeah, and Bunny because... Uh, why not? I thought it was cute. And the other ones are kind of named semi-randomly. Like some of them are named after their hair color and others just like... Uh, kind of random. And yeah, we'll, we'll see how many of them actually survive, which I'm not too optimistic about. But our goals for this playthrough well, the main one is do not let any of these three races die out. 
I would like to also do a few things that I haven't done in a Dwarf Fortress game before. I would like to eventually cast a palace out of ice, which is apparently possible because if you make kind of a, a, a mold from like stone or whatever and then pour water into it, eventually this water freezes. So you have a, an ice wall. So technically you could cast a whole freaking fortress out of ice. Sounds pretty cool to me. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. I would also like to play around with vermin a little bit. I've actually never used the kind of vermin traps, so I've never played with vermin. But apparently you can capture some little critters, such as pouring maggots that can be milked. So we try to do that in the cavern, so we see how that goes. And uh, I would also like to capture some to display them in our people's bedrooms because you can make actually terrariums and aquariums. I don't know how aquariums would work in a in the ice portion of the fortress. They might just freeze. I don't know. I know that buckets freeze apparently, but we we'll see. We we'll see. Worst case scenario, the bedrooms will be underground. Yes. So these are our three main goals: play with vermin cast a, a palace from ice and don't don't let them die <laughs> which uh we're going to be focusing on this don't let them die part first <laughs> wish me luck all right let's see i do believe yes i already assigned bunny as our manager of course we've got uh, puffball as our expedition leader we can assign a militia commander i've got one human that's a particularly good armor user so I might just make him a uh, militia commander, why not? So I would say that Mace, aptly named, is going to be our militia commander. And since that's a human and you want to be, you know, inclusive, uh, we'll make an elf a sheriff, I think. Uh, sheriff is going to be red. I don't think I'm going to have a hammerer. I don't want anybody to accidentally die or anything like that. Okay, so who's going to be the chief medical? I think I'm going to make an elf chief medical. You know what? I think I think that fear is going to be good fair. I don't think we're going to need a messenger anytime soon. All right, so I think this set is good for now. We've got Puffball as the expedition leader. We've got Fair, an elf, as a chief medical person. We've got our lovely manager, slash broker, slash bookkeeper. We've got a sheriff, who is also an elf. And we've got a militia commander, who is a human, who seemed the most suited, according to dwarf therapist. We've got our assignment, and unfortunately, all of our humans and elves are unfortunately kind of naked. They do not have any items on them. You would also not is that they are all married off because I just cannot be bothered to deal with Dwarf Fortress mechanic of marrying people and I wanted like specific couples just for my own aesthetic honestly so they are already all married to to each other uh, you would notice that there's some weirdness with the spouse names but I think that's just because like they technically have each other but they don't like really know each other because they're literally just spawned into existence like it's almost as if the volcano just like speed them out or something. Also, this is our whole embark. As you can see, we have a little bit of a hill going on. A nice volcano, a nice volcano, which kind of goes down, 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 down. And this would, would seem like a natural place to like dig into. But I also kind of like that we have basically this space right there. So I'm thinking that we're going to dig in here, which is like way closer to our current position of our our stuff, basically. Also, I did notice some weirdness. See, there's running water right here, which uh, I'm not sure if there was some lava weirdness going on. I would expect this water to like freeze almost immediately, we'll see. So I definitely want to build an ice palace. So I'm wondering what would be a good location for a staircase down? So we've got this uh, kind of plateau, basically. This is the lava level. So I want to be like one above. So yeah, at this level. Okay, so that's where I would like the main portion of the ice palace to go. That I might make a staircase right here. It's kind of like central to this beach, right? Well, I suppose you could always like shape the hill a little bit later. Like we could flood a bit and, you know, then carve ramps, like make it look natural. And then snow is going to fall and everything is going to look as as if it was always like this. I might do it here and like use this for like temporary rooms. While I dig down and try to 
find a place deeper down. Okay, we might actually make an entrance right here, maybe? So give me a moment while I work out how I want to do this. I think I've got some beginnings of a plan. We are going to carve out this bit first. Try to get some space for our people and animals to hide from the cold, basically. Speaking of animals, let's see, what have we got? We've got kittens, because you cannot really get them otherwise, honestly. So I thought I would get some cats on Embark. I didn't get any other animals though. I wanted some encouragement to actually explore catching animals down in the caverns and using them, taming them. So that's why I didn't embark with too many animals, just, just kittens, to like ward of vermin from my stockpiles and of course the two animals that come kind of bundled with the wagon so we're going to use them while we can i do believe buffalo might be shareable i don't think mules are though yeah we're gonna make use of that buffalo while it's still alive which you know since it's going to be a multi-generation fortress eventually it won't be <laughs> and we don't really have a a couple of them so they won't breed but for now we're going to make use of it uh, and we need to get it down very fast. There is no grass on the glacier. Uh, we need to get to the caverns here fast and, you know, secure something for it to graze on and for the mule, I suppose. Although we might just butcher the mule as soon as we can. Well, we'll see. Oh, I'm a bit anxious to unpause. I'm not sure what's going to happen with that water that I'm seeing. Let's see. Is something going to melt? All right, the moment of the truth. I uh, and immediately froze, apparently. Yes, that's kind of what I was expecting. <gasps> there is a dusting of mud on this thing. Not like anything is going to grow on it, but there is some mud. Yeah, I'm not sure what was up with this water. It was kind of strange. It doesn't seem like the volcano is melting anything, which is good. Nobody's falling in so far. Haha! <laughs> Yet another proof that our civilization is dead. Pavbal is now the queen of the Rao ceiling, which is our dwarven civilization. Beautiful name, truly, truly beautiful name. So yes, uh, Pavbal is apparently queen. I'm mildly disappointed that Bunny is not the queen, but you know, good old Pavbal, she's very reliable, I think. Let's see, let's look at her. She looks kind of queenly. I don't know, maybe other than her robes, you know. We gotta like get her some nice robes, dyed blue. It's the only dye that we have access to, unfortunately. I would have loved to like give her some, some various colors of clothing, but she's going to make do with blue. We have limited resources on the glacier, but everything we can do for a queen, we shall do. She's a bit sloppy. She values harmony, which is good, I think. She's a bit of a loner. Slow to love. This is fine. I arrange your marriage. Don't worry, Puffball. You already got a husband, which is technically like a consort, I suppose. Yeah, so we've got a queen who is a clover and king, question mark, who is a carpenter and woodcutter. I do hope he won't die because I am going to be sending him off to the caverns to cut things. Ooh. This is going to be a problem. Also, poor Pavbal is not going to have a royal throne for a while. Although we might, perhaps we should... I'm not sure if we can do like ice sculptures, that would be kind of cool. But technically ice is like infinite. If we can pump water to the surface, which is going to be hard, I think I'm going to have to actually warm the quote-unquote pipes that I'm going to be using, which is basically just like carving through the rock to like put in a pump stack. I might need lava for that just so water does not freeze in them, which is always a problem in a glacier. Like water just freezes. The same thing that allows you to cast ice is the thing that makes it hard to cast ice, you know? <laughs> I think. I've never actually tried, but we shall see. Perhaps pumped water doesn't freeze? I don't know. You'd have to verify that. What I'm afraid of is also that if I like try to dump water from a bit above, it's just going to like freeze too high in the mold and it's just going to, you know, mess up everything because then water goes everywhere and you got ice everywhere and it's just a giant mess. Oh, I just noticed her last name, Diamond Groups, you know, Diamond is like very queenly. Yeah, so she's a planter and an herbalist. I need someone who can gather. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately our queen and her consort are going to be going off into the caverns because I need someone to gather plants fast and I need someone to cut uh, mushroom trees fast. 
So uh, the royals are going to be first in the line of fire of various things that can be squirming through the caverns. Oh, this is this is entertaining. Also, I need to get them off from the snowstorm. Like everybody's irritated. So let's see. I have to look into legends to see what various gods they worship. Unfortunately, and I wish there was one. There is no button to like see the description of a god. We have to actually assign a temple to see what sort of spheres it has. We see. Oh yes. Okay. So Plank is the king consort. That's the official title. Fancy. Okay, let's see. She has no memories yet. She's basically a blank slate. That's how dwarves that embark are. Everybody here is a blank slate, basically. They are not related to any historical figure, which is a bit sad. Like, I was thinking about maybe, like, forcing the relationships, but it would take a lot of work. Uh, like, I am perfectly capable of doing that with the hack, but it's a lot of work. I would have to decide, like, who they are related to and such, and, like, input the right links and... It's just a hassle. No, it's it's fine if, if they don't have a big family line. Perhaps they're just peasants that just happen to escape the goblins, you know. The goblins and all the horrible other creatures that are roaming this world. There's a lot of them. I have to crank up this savagery and such to be able to actually get extinct civilizations. So uh, it's a very dangerous world, so, which is going to be fun. And the difficulty of this particular playthrough is way higher than I'm used to. I'm a bit excited about that, actually. It's going to be a challenge, especially with this embark. But uh, yeah, okay, let's look at our queen's personality. She has good intuition, a good kinesthetic sense and good creativity. Okay, okay, so our queen is pretty creative. I like that. Good intuition, good kinesthetic sense. She prefers to be alone. She's alone, we already know that. She's generally unhindered by the thoughts of others concerning her actions. Ooh, so she's going to be like, well, I'm making the decisions here and you listen. And she doesn't care about others' input on that, I suppose. Um, uh, just, you know, we see how that goes, we see. She's slow to anger, oh, which is very good. She's unlikely to be tantruming, I think, which is preferable in a monarch who is not going to have uh, some proper rooms for a while and is probably going to be a bit irritated about that. She tends to make a small mess of her own possessions, that's fine, like a monarch. A monarch is a monarch, she can like throw things around, like nobody cares, you know? Like her throne is her throne room, she can do whatever she likes with it. If she wants to have socks all over the place, well she have socks all over the place, that's what a queen does. She does not easily find enough, that's fine, you've got a husband already. Uh, and they develop positive sentiments. Yeah, so she, she's not like, you know, she's not quick to like form positive emotions about others. She's somewhat uncomfortable around those that appear unusual or differently from herself. And that might be a problem considering she's got elves and humans in this particular form. I am a bit afraid that she might just, uh, you know, not be so kind towards them. She tends to be a bit stubborn in changing her mind about things, so it's not going to be easy to convince her that, yes, like, they, they are just as much citizens of this world as dwarves are, right? She tends to be swayed by the emotions of others, so perhaps something, you know, some emotional pleas are going to get through to her about that. Uh, what does she value? Yeah, so these are general dwarven values, that's fine. She personally values a harmonious existence and does not particularly value the truth. So, in order to kind of keep this whole fortress working, like everybody working in harmony, she's willing to lie. And she dreams of raising a family, which is fine. I suppose we'll get an actual royal bloodline at some point from Queen Puffball. Oh, this is amazing. Preferences. All right, what does our, our queen like? We have to make sure to include as much as we can in her royal quarters once we actually, you know, get off the snow and actually secure means to survive. We'll get right on making her her throne room. So she likes thin glaze. So I don't think we'll have anything to glaze. We don't really have a source of clay, I don't think. Okay, but she does like aluminum, demantoid, whatever that is. Uh, let me look it up on Dwarf Fortress Wiki, actually, because I have no idea. Okay, so demantoid is apparently a relatively rare gem found only in chromite, which itself is only found in olivine. 
Okay, so it's a rare gem. Let's see, she likes tables. Goats, unfortunately, we won't have any goats ever. Tigers, unfortunately, we won't have any tigers on a glacier. When possible, she prefers to consume cow cheese, cassava beer, dwarven milk, and acacia seeds. And she did a slugs. Okay, dwarven milk, which is yet another reason why we want pairing maggots. So we can give the queen her preferred drink, other than, you know, alcohol. <laughs> Although I suppose they don't really drink milk per se, they use it for cooking. So yes, we have to make sure to always have me meals with dwarven milk to keep our queen Pavbal happy. Okay, so from things that we can do, we might attempt to find some demantoid. It is a pretty rare gem though. So that's going to be a bit of a search. All right, so I added to our things that we want to achieve make our queen an aluminum crown with demantoid gem in it. That is going to be the symbol of our monarch if we can get it actually, you know, going. I'm not sure if we have aluminum on this map. I have to look up what metals we have. I honestly forgot. I checked an embark, but I forgot. I know we have iron, I think, but I'm not sure about aluminum. We see, and we have to make sure to make a lot of beautiful tables. Uh, perhaps we'll use the tables to... Perhaps we engrave some tables with history of our people. So she she just have a front room surrounded with tables with stories on them, which is kind of cool, you know? Maybe we'll make like a grand dining hall the same way. Oh, we see, we see. Everything to make our new queen happy. She is the ruler of our new civilization. And she's going to be putting herself in a bit of a danger, so she deserves only the best. Mm, she has some basic clothing on. We have to make sure to like, get her something more proper at some point. Something with dye in it to like raise its value a little bit. We all, we unfortunately have to settle for pigtail for a while, although we might get our hands on some spider silk, who knows? Preferably giant spider silk. But, you know, that's always a bit risky. So she, oh, actually, she's doubling a lot of things. I'm not surprised that she, she got the position. She's just attacking to people in general. Probably because she's not afraid to lie. Perhaps, you know, uh, some fake flattering always helps, always helps. All right, so our brave Rocky is currently carving out this fair space for us. As soon as he's done, I'll make a meeting hall. Oh, there we go, okay. Punch, Mob Prowse has assumed the position of expedition leader of the beginning, which is our dwarven group, the beginning. A very fitting name, I thought. So Punch, I do believe he's a human. Let's look at you, Punch. Oh, he's actually the husband of Mace. Our, I believe she is our militia commander. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Oh, <laughs> full punch disdains family. Unfortunately, my man, you are no married. And I am expecting children coming soon, sir. Do your duty towards your race. All right, he's emotionally distant, very private. Value self-control. So he's kind of like closed off person. He's merciful though, which is good. He does not have feelings of emotional attachment and has never felt even a moment's connection with another being. <laughs> oh my, oh my, and this person is our expedition leader. Excellent, excellent. I wonder if he's going to be also the mayor <laughs> once the time comes. Uh, he has a strong tendency towards privacy. He often acts with compassion, which is good. He enjoys the company of others. Oh, okay, so he's actually kind of social, just kind of enjoying the vibe, but not really sharing much himself. He doesn't mind wearing something special now and again. We'll make sure to give you some good clothing at some point, my poor naked man. Uh, he's brave in the face of imminent danger. He tries to do things correctly each time. What does he like? Cutting stones, sterling silver, peridot. Couple good maces. Oh, he likes maces, that's nice. Quivers. And animal traps. Mm. I'm thinking that perhaps we'll get him to catch some vermin for us. Alright, he did as oysters, that's fine. I'm not expecting an oysters on this map. Uh, we might look at. Let's look at Bunny, our manager. Bunny, the wife of Bismuth, the smith. She's our manager. Another one that this is family. That's one of them. Also a loner. Over reliant on advice. Weak. Private. Creative. And it's a study. That's fine. We'll get you a study eventually. 
personality, very good creativity, feel for music. Oh, okay. So if we get a little tavern going for, for our folks to like, you know, improve their mood a little bit on this horrible place, we might just make her a performer. So when whenever she's not busy, you know, managing stuff, she might just play something. We have to make instruments eventually. I'm not sure what sort of instruments we've got in this world. They are randomly generated, I believe. But we'll see. It will power, poor empathy, quite poor focus. Orderly life. She's polite. Compassion, that's nice. Tight with resources. Uh, that's good. She's our manager and we are tight on resources. So that's uh, preferable. Doesn't see excitement. <laughs> she commonly wings as a form of greeting. Oh, that's adorable. She personally lacks an aspect for family values, independence, and she'd like to create a great work of art. She might at some point. She likes Arnold, Bilon, Shore, Mango Woods. Or she likes backpacks, okay? Scepters. We might just get her a scepter at some point, perhaps. Flask, rabbits for the ability to borrow. I don't think we're going to be. I don't think there are rabbits on a glacier. Maybe? Like white rabbits? I'm not sure. We have to. We have to set some traps, you know? First, of course, some cranberry one, babies. You're not gonna get that, my lady. And she did a scorpions, which is good. No scorpions on a glacier. There's one class of it. <laughs> and I would like to also look at Red, who is our sheriff. She likes to present herself boldly. She can get cut on internal deliberations when action is necessary. Strong emotional bonds with others. She isn't given the place of fancy, overindulges. Acts with compassion. Lack of perseverance. Quite confident. Hang on to grievances. Circa's tradition, which is presumably good considering she's part of a dwarven civilization now. So, elven traditions, um, not much sway here. Expects fair dealing and fair play, and consider Quasmash to be relatively worthless. So, it is good that you're not going to be crafting a lot, probably, Sheriff. She likes blue and feather woods. Cougar lever. Gems. Oh, she generally likes gems. So it's going to be easy to like, get something nice. Trousers! She likes trousers. I'm going to have to make some trousers for her. And Gryphons. She prefers to consume iguana. No iguanas on a glacier. No prickle berry wine. She detests flies. Same. Same, my lady. <laughs> flies are horrible. Okay, uh, let's go. We'll see if we get any more potential nobles. Oh, we need to clear the slope. There we go. Hurry up, Rocky. Everybody's freezing out there. See, the kittens are already trying to come in. There we go. We'll make a meeting area right here. And we're going to name it the Ice Hall. That's nice. We need a door at some point, but we have nothing to build it from. What are you doing, Graham? Are you just staring into the volcano? Just like, so beautiful. Do not jump, Graham. We need someone to brew our stuff. What are you doing, Prim? Oh, she's already making friends. Look at her. That's so nice. She's making friends with the queen. Okay, so everybody basically went up at this point. Just like hanging there. Oh, 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 they're going, they're going, they're going. Okay, 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 okay. Everybody's inside now. Out of the blizzard. Awesome, awesome. Okay, okay. Suckers. And the animals are also going. Ooh, hello. Too late, rhino lizard. Oh, yeah, it is uh, a bit of a savage biome, I believe, which is why they're spawning here. They don't spawn in like, you know, super calm biomes. So we have, let's see, oh, we can get three pieces of wood if we dismantle the thing. I'm kind of afraid to do it though. Okay, and we need to appoint our first squad. We really need to do that. Um, okay, so we've got some drinks, got some thread. I've got some meat somewhere. So we've got that. Uh, some crutches, some splints, just in case. I do not have any soap, so we have to get that on the list. We need soap and we need water in case of any injuries, which there, there will be. And I do not want anybody to die from fairs. That happened in one of my fortresses. Come on, Rocky. Save us. Save us, Rocky. Get us to the caverns. Please. We are going to follow him. Okay, so we are getting down. Okay, what have we got? What sort of rock is that? So that's Al Alunite. Someone was liking Alunite, I believe. That's I see some. We still got some eyes. We still got some. Oh, there we go. Proper rock, microcline, alun another alunite. Dasite, cinnabar. Yeah, we've struck a bunch of things. I need to get to the caverns, like ASAP. So I'm not going to be stopping too much on exploring. 
Okay, my crown. That would that would be kind of nice floor potentially. All yellow, granite, granite, micro granite, granite, rhyolite. We've got a lot of alunite on the map. I might eventually run some DF hack tools to check just how much of each rock we've got. That would be interesting. Diorite, diorite. His, his, his. I don't know how to pronounce that. A stone storm has come. Okay, so we got off the snow just in time. Microcline, microcline is a nice blue color. Orthoclass, comartite, honey yellow bell cluster. So we got some gems right off the bat. Alunite, yes, we've got much alunite. It's like, I think it might be our main rock, honestly. Buzzard, okay, so we've got some buzzard. Oh, we've got obsidian, okay. Side shine. Of course, some obsidian. That's interesting. It's a nice black rock, and it's a decent value, I believe. So we might have to make something from that. Olivine. So that's green. What is that cavern? Am I missing it? Or min minus fifteen. We might have missed it. We might have actually missed it. Oh no. Oh no. That's bad. I wanted this to be our entrance to the caverns. Poor Rocky. I'm sure that everybody's making friends up above, even if they are like sitting bare ash on ice. And he's just gonna be going deep and like mining and mining and mining. He's, a, he, he's my only, you know, miner. So better not lose that pickaxe. Oh, okay. I guess he took a break. Yeah, he took a break. Here we go again. I swear, if we just mine right to the lava sea, it's going to be irritating. Oh, we might just lose our animals before we get to the caverns. Oh, that's minus 60. I don't think caverns like stretch this deep. Oh, no. Oh no, not my kitty! Oh, oh no. Oh, we've got a yeti. <laughs> you go, kitten, you go. Okay. So, our kitten is fighting with the yeti. What? <laughs> the yeti takes the straight kitten down with the first left front tooth. <laughs> Are you playing with the kitty paws? What? Where is this yeti? Oh, hello. Hi. Seriously injured. What? <laughs> <laughs> and our king was attacked with the yeti and he uh, screamed a lot and apparently he's fine now. Where is he? Oh, he's the key. Oh no. Are you okay? Oh, he's healthy. Oh, I need to pasture the animals. Jeez. Okay. So here's the guy. Where's the yeti? What's that yeti? Oh, he's over here. Okay. You know what? We gotta kill it. So it's time to assemble our squad. Uh, metal armor. The icy rims, you know, that fits. Alright, so let's see. We're going to get swear and square. There we go. So you got three people and they should soon equip their things, I reckon. Oh yeah, and I need to get that pasture in place. Hold on. All of our animals, thank you very much. Don't let the kittens run around into yetis. Oh, right. Excuse me. Humans cannot equip the armor, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to assign some elves, I suppose. Cream and pepper, yes. Oh, oh, look at this poor Yeti. He was afraid after experiencing trauma. He was shocked after being attacked. Sir, you were scratched by a kitten. Diagnosis required. You know, I feel actually kind of bad for, for, for this guy. For him, yes. 413 years old? I want to adopt him <laughs> and heal him, poor guy. Oh, his upper body is cut open. What did this kitten do to him? <laughs> oh, the yeti is making everybody nervous. I think I gotta kill it. I think I gotta kill it, unfortunately. There will be more yetis, you know. Oh, look at them. Look at all the elves. Oh, that's adorable. Hello. <laughs> Pepper, you look great. Oh, 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 there we go. There, are, there we go. They're coming. They're coming. Okay, let's see. Oof. The Yeti punches the elf recruiting the left upper arm with his right hand, bruising the fat. Yeti misses, attacks, misses, misses, attacks, and misses. The human recruit stabs the Yeti in the left upper leg with his copper short sword, doing the muscle. Nice! Yeti falls over. Oh, oof, oof. Oh, doing the muscle, bruising the heart, okay. Oh no, the Yeti bends the human recruit's right hand with the Yeti's right upper leg and the right for his collapses. Oof. More of it is bruises, but somebody's hand is pretty messed up. The Yeti has been stunned, so oh, that's good. Oh, the Yeti punches the human recruit. The Yeti throws the human recruit. Oh no. Oh, they are bravely fighting. Oh, there we go. The Yeti gives into pain. 
Okay, so now they're just, you know, finishing him off. Okay, it's not quite that yet. Shaken to the... I'm sorry, Yeti, but you are bothering people. I'm so sorry. Poor 413 years of peace on this glacier. And now there's a bunch of, you know, rowdy people that think that this place belongs to them and they're just, like, killing him. Ah, oh, kill Yeti. I feel so bad. I feel so, so bad. Jesus Christ. Battle rages. I feel no terror. Oh! There he is. Okay, okay. Who killed it? Let's see. Let's see. Who's got the kill? Um, so the ones that were fighting is Prim, Square and Pumpkin. Was that you? Ah, it was you. Okay. One kill. One eating ice crystal. Okay, Pumpkin. You know what? You're getting a room first. <laughs> Good job, Pumpkin. Good job, Pumpkin. How did you kill it? Okay, so the Eddie got punched in the head. Oh yeah, I guess all the, the elves could do is punch people. How are you on your skills? Dubbing armor is a dubbing observer. No punching ability. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to build a butcher's workshop and see if I can butcher it. So everything is cold, so I'm hoping that it won't decay too fast. Farming, butcher, there we go. Why is the kitten out there? Go home? Are you hunting for more yetis? Jesus Christ, that cat. Oh, there we go, okay. See, that's me. There is a yeti corpse right there. Is it because it's intelligent in some way? No, yetis are not intelligent and you advise to gleefully butcher them into full and bones. Okay, so the wiki says that they should be able to be butchered. Let me see what's going on with that thing. It's not rotten, is it? It's not. <sighs> Finally. Finally. There we go. All right on top of a mushroom. That's that's kind of amazing. All right, all right, all right. Do we have any water though? Yes. Oh, we are saved. We mark it as a water source. Oh, that's kind of interesting little island there. Look at this beautiful moss. Oh, this is so good. Okay. You need to get on it ASAP. Oh, we've got a troll in the caverns. Okay. I'm going to station them right there. <gasps> oh. Oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. Oh, shit. Oh, that won't end well. That will not end well. Pumpkin is fighting the troll. <laughs> oh, you are thirsty for blood, aren't you? Okay. Oh, poor Pump. Oh, Pumpkin is going to die, I think. Okay, okay, okay. It's bleeding. It's bleeding. It is bleeding. Okay, so we've got mace. I'm just terrorizing these old creatures that live in freaking peace for so long. Oh, various true, various tranquility. Oh no. Oh, oh. She, oh, it's a she. She has great cre. Oh no. Oh. Oh, I feel so. Like, she has actual fucking soul, man. I feel so bad. Oh no. Do we have a family? Not really. There we go. Pumpkin. Oh no. Oh, you are seriously. Uh, oh. Holy shit. Don't worry. Someone is coming. Oh no. Oh no, pumpkin. I believe to sound lost. Okay, so he's not breathing out, so that's good. A right upper leg is bruised, his left knee is mangled. Okay, so that's good. Poor pumpkin. So who killed that troll? Let's see. Uh, I guess Mace. Death is all around us. This is truly horrifying. Yeah, the militia commander slashed the throne in the head with her copy shot, so tearing apart the muscle and fracturing the skull. Okay, so she basically cut into her skull. Well, that's cool. I'm going to attempt to butcher it. Don't get bitten by, by cave spiders, pumpkin. Injured. What's wrong with you? Her neck is torn open. Oh, that's not good. I don't think... Okay, so she's not faint. I don't think she's actually bleeding. We need to clean her wounds, though. Uh, let's make a hospital zone. I'm just going to carve out a space over here. There you go, Rocky. And we need beds, so we need to cut some trees. Uh, let's try this tower cap, because it's bothering me. Oh no, kitties. Why aren't you pastured? I don't think Plank wants to cut it. Oh, he's busy. Hold on. Oh, he's pasturing this stray kitten that's, uh, that was out hunting yetis. <laughs> In emotional shock, excuse me? Oh my god, hold on. <laughs> Plank, King Consort, Kansas Pen Pasture Close Stray Kitten, experiencing emotional shock. Are you okay, Plank? What is this cat doing to people? <laughs> what 
<laughs> in emotional shock. I'm sorry, what? Okay, so he's really being attacked by the Yeti, I think. I think that's what's going on. Uh, thoughts, memories. Okay, so we gotta give him a wee bit of time, even though we need bats like right now. It would be great if we had pets right now, but okay. I'm going to appoint the hospital anyway. New hospital. The home. I don't like this name. Let's change this name. The Quiet Sanctuary, I like it. Okay, so we've got like open freaking entrance here for anything, literally anything. Okay, so staff might like swim in, but this is like decently, decently open cavern actually. Oh, okay, so we ha we've got upwards slope right here. Okay, so we've got like this section. Okay, so we have we got a wall of like a good portion of the thing. I could have got some walls here, so just we just block this and this and like pieces here uh, and like here and a bit here, like we.